sketch a graph of x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y plus 4 equals 0. This is going to be a circle in the end, but to figure out what that circle looks like, we need to get the x terms together and the y terms together and move the constant to the other side, and then we need to complete the squares and factor. So what we're going to do first is we're going to move the x terms together. That's going to be x squared minus 4x. And then I'm going to leave just a little bit of space because we're going to be completing the square next. Then we've got plus y squared plus 6y. And again, I'm going to leave some space for completing the square. And then I'm going to move that constant term to the other side. And we do that by subtracting 4 from both sides which puts a negative 4 on the right-hand side. Now that we've done this, we can complete the squares. Let's look at the x's. To complete the square, we take the coefficient on the x, negative 4, and we divide it by 2 and square it. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and squaring that gives us positive 4. However, if we add 4 to the left-hand side, we also have to add 4 to the right-hand side of the equation. Now let's look at the y's. Here, the coefficient on the y is 6. When we divide that by 2, we get 3. And when we square that, we get 9. So we need to add 9 to complete the square. But again, that means we need to add 9 to the other side of the equation as well. Now that we've completed the squares, we can factor each of the trinomials in x and y x squared minus 4x plus 4 becomes x minus 2 squared. Remember, the number that goes here is always the number we get after we've divided that coefficient by 2. Then we're going to have plus y plus, and here after we divide 6 by 2, we end up with 3. So that's going to be y plus 3 squared. You could also... Uh, unfoil each of these, you'd get x minus 2 times x minus 2, x plus 3 times x plus 3. So there's another way to do that if you're not familiar with doing this in your head. And then on the right hand side, those negative and positive 4's cancel and we're left with 9. Once we write the equation like this, we have the circle in standard form. So our center, h comma k, is going to be 2 comma negative 3. Remember, whenever we have a positive number inside the parentheses, that gives us a negative coordinate. And the radius is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So now we have all the information we need to graph our circle. We start with the center, which is at 2 comma negative 3, right there. And then we draw in our guide points, 3 units to the right, 3 units above, 3 units to the left, and 3 units below. And then we draw our circle. That's looking good so far. Can I make it look beautiful? Nice. That is probably one of the best circles that I've drawn in these examples. I hope you're proud of me, and I hope that your circle looks just as beautiful, if not more beautiful. And I'm going to label this with the original equation that we were given. Remember, it's nice to use the original equation so that the label on the graph matches the label or the original equation in the actual problem. This is especially true if you're graphing using graph paper that's outside of your regular notebook. That way you can match up the problem and the graph pretty easily.